Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Chauvin is at it again, filing appeal papers to try to overturn his conviction. See, ladies and gentlemen, you know, America puts a lot of people in jail that never committed crimes, but the ones that actually did commit crimes, they give them too much leeway in the system. When you murder, lynch, someone out in public, you should not be allowed to just willy-nilly file papers to get out of the whole thing. But see, they got this crooked system set up for Derek Chauvin types. So there's always a glimmer of a chance they can overturn a case and skip on out and go enjoy the rest of their life when it shouldn't be that way at all. When you're convicted of a murder, that should be it. But not in this crooked place. It's not it. So Derek Chauvin is claiming that the jury was poisoned against him. Imagine that a man that killed someone with their knee in broad daylight on camera think he was wronged. After the events in question that led to riots, well, there wouldn't have been riots if you didn't execute a man out on the streets. It, then there would not have been riots. So he claims it was impossible for him to get a fair conviction. So in other words, you should have set me free. That's what he's really saying. You should have set me free. So all right, let's get into this. I do got plenty to say, of course, but let's get into this. The former uh, Minnesota police officer convicted of murdering George Floyd Jr. is underscoring a request for an appeals court to overturn his multi-state level conviction. A Minnesota jury agreed with prosecutors last year that Derek Chauvin was guilty of second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Chauvin's attorney struck a plea deal on the federal charges in a separate proceedings. Chauvin's attorney on Friday filed a reply. So uh, what they're trying to do is have his state level convictions thrown out. That's what Chauvin and his attorney are trying to do. The defense laundry list of complaints include the attention attracted by the death of George Floyd. Well, of course, it's going to attract attention. You stared into a camera and leaned hard on somebody's neck. And you, you expect that wasn't going to attract a lot of attention? Just the fact that you made that statement is idiotic. But let's go on. And he's claiming that issues with the juror, the defense characterization as a liar. Well, I can go with that. You know, look, if America was about something, you would never let a person convicted of a murder turn around and do all of these appeals. If you do certain sort of crimes and you definitely, like Derek Chauvin, was the one that murdered another person, there should be no appealing. But in this lame-ass system, there is. Pre-trial publicity coupled with threats of violence poisoned the jury against appellate Derek Chauvin. So uh, in a brief argument, it cites local daily media coverage, protests at the courthouse and riots in response to the events in question, the latter of which it said were the second most destructive riots in American history that caused $500 million in property damage. What does, what does that got to do with Derek Chauvin? killing George Floyd. 
And even if those things did occur, those are not things that should get uh, Derek Chauvin off the hook. The hell are you talking about? Okay, those things would never have occurred if George Floyd was not lynched out on the streets by Derek Chauvin. Then you wouldn't have had any property damage at all. Screw all that property damage. Don't you have insurance if you're in business? Get the hell out of here. And two deaths in the local Hennepin County area. Again, Derek Chauvin is responsible for that. None of those things would have been kicked off without him lynching George Floyd in the streets. A brief contains several technical legal arguments, including that the district court erred on their tier of the U.S. Supreme Court tests for measuring whether pretrial publicity or preconceived juror notions necessitated the change in venue. Prejudice is presumed when the community from which jurors are drawn is sufficiently poisoned either by adverse publicity or the effects of the very events at issue. This dude got a lot of nerve. He's got a lot of nerve to believe these arguments are going to get him off the hook. I, I wish there was a way to tack on more years on Derek Chauvin for wasting taxpayer money doing this whole thing. Amber Geiger, too. Okay, so in case, in the case, the second worst riots in U.S. history. So uh, they're saying that, you know, the whole jury pool was prejudice from the publicity. Chauvin's juror said the state suggests ignoring and abandoning the U.S. Supreme Court's two-tier approach to such question and to apply abuse of discretion analysis to both tiers instead. With the biased media coverage, the Floyd riots, the Brooklyn Center riots during the trial, the lack of cooling period, and the legal impossible conviction on all charged counts, Chauvin's case land in the company of extreme cases where publicity went beyond the bounds of mere news media and had a physical effect on the venue community, Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. So you really wanted that trial outside of the county that it occurred in. You know, it's the same Amber Geiger playbook, you know, but they didn't fall for that. And I'm glad they didn't. Your trial should have been exactly where it was in the same city that death occurred in. The document went on, we've omitted some citations and embedded several other links rather than text. So the brief also complained that jurors were not sequestered and that one juror, Brandon Mitchell, who has spoken publicly several times about his service lied regarding his views of the case and the extent of his activism. Okay, so it's the riots, it's the poisoned uh, jury pool, and one of the jurors speaking out. That That's all the proof you need to get Derek Chauvin out of the whole thing. Y'all need to go sit down with this appeal, for real. The brief explains Chauvin's issues with Mitchell. Again, we've omitted the strict legal citation to the record. Specifically, the brief pointed out. Um, so they're saying uh, the brief argues that Chauvin would have sought to strike Mitchell from. So in other words, we would have kicked this juror out altogether. That's what they are saying. 
Well, that's too bad. The trial is over. Derek Chauvin is a convicted murderer. And no, nothing should be overturned on the behalf of Derek Chauvin, a cold-blooded killer. Because that's what he is. No, this juror speaking out didn't do all of that to you, Derek Chauvin. So, you know, they're doing that same thing you see in the South where the dead black victim becomes the villain and the police officer that killed him becomes the victim. You know, that same BS they used to do down in the South, where, as you can see, they do that all over the country. So anyway, um, he's trying to say, oh, it's cause for concern that this one juror is speaking out. So what? So what? The prosecutors have in the past defended the juror in question. They also said the publicity surrounding the trial wasn't as significant as they initially feared. Additionally, Chauvin's uh, reply brief box of his third degree murder conviction was legally um, illogical because his actions were directed against an individual person the third degree murder is only possible with the undirected mens rea, the brief said, citing the Minnesota Supreme Court a 2021 ruling in favor of Muhammad Noor. Well, Muhammad Noor just shot um, Justine Resnick one time. Okay, he didn't get on her neck for over nine minutes. And I do think he was in fear. They said it was dark out there. She really should have kept her ass in the house until the police came to the door. But she just couldn't do that. And I do believe in his case, he was scared. It was dark out there. He didn't know who was, who approached the uh, patrol car in the dark. Because they said it was not very well lit out there. It was very dark. So he's trying to compare himself to Muhammad Noor. Okay. Uh, Chauvin's April 20th, 2021 convicted, predicated uh, the high court's uh, September 15th, 2021 ruling in Noor's case. And Chauvin's attorney wanted the holding in Noor's case applied to Chauvin. No, no. Those were two entirely different situations. Mm -mm. You know, uh, number one, Muhammad Noor just shot um, Justine one time. When your cops go out on the street, the ones that look like Derek Chauvin, they make sure they empty the entire gun on especially a black man. They'll uh, unload all rounds in the gun. All right. Plus, according to Chauvin, his second degree felony murder conviction must be reversed because police officers cannot, as a matter of law, be convicted of felony murder attached to a third degree assault. Well, Derek, if that were not the case, you would not have gotten 22 and a half years, which I think is way too short for somebody like you. So... The brief went on to argue that the district court improperly withheld training manuals that instructed uh, officers to place their knee on the back of a suspect resisting arrest. He wasn't resisting arrest. We saw the video. Y'all had him handcuffed on the ground. He was in your custody and you proceeded to kill him anyway. I know that's what I saw. So he was not resisting at all. He was down on that ground handcuffed. What resisting could he have done at that point? The filing also asserted that Chauvin's trial violated the constitution by falling by, I'm sorry, by failing to allow testimony. Um, a passenger in Floyd's car, Maurice Hall. 
under the influence of drugs at the time of his death. Okay, well, if that were the case, how come you didn't do nothing to him? The only one I saw you going after was George Floyd. Okay, so even if he was under the influence, he was the passenger in that car. Wow. Uh, You know, it's like everybody is guilty except for Derek Chauvin, according to his appeal. Hall did not testify during Floyd's trial because he said he would incriminate himself if he took the stand. Chauvin's attorney said Hall's brief could have been entered in other ways had the court declare him unavailable, an unavailable witness. And see, that's the dude that George Floyd got that $20 from that they claim was counterfeit. Then we haven't heard about this $20 bill in any of the cases for the other three police officers and Derek Chauvin's trial. We haven't heard anything about that $20 bill. So additional arguments are also contained in Chauvin's 34 page reply brief. The document as a whole asks either that Chauvin's conviction be reversed or that Chauvin receive a new trial, which he should not be entitled to either one of those things or Chauvin uh, be resentenced to a lesser term. That's the same stuff Amber Geiger tried to pull. That's the same thing she tried to pull, y'all. The state of Minnesota filed previous papers to argue the opposite. So, ladies and gentlemen, nothing should be overturned for Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin is a murderer. He's a convicted murderer. He's a felon. And no, nothing should be reversed or overturned. Nothing. He got an easy sentence compared to what he should have really gotten, which is a life sentence. Derek Chauvin should be in there for the rest of his life, as far as I'm concerned. And hopefully we'll hear in the next few weeks that the court has thrown this garbage out that him and his lawyer filed. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. I... (laughs) Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.